Now that we created our Angular application, let's go and create a component. I'm going to create a component. I'm going to call it value component. And we're going to be deleting this in a couple videos, but for now, just for testing purposes, we'll, we'll generate that, make sure our application is working. And then what we'll do is when we create this component, we'll add it, we'll make sure it's added to the module and then we'll just display it to the view. And that's pretty much it for this video. Now the, this link I have, this URL here is going to be down in the description. You can just click on that and you'll find this page here. And this is a really good page that shows you how to generate different things like modules, classes. In our case, in this video, we're going to be generating a component. You could click on that. It'll send you down to the section of the page on how to generate components. Now I'm going to keep it short and simple. I'm just going to go ng generate and then the name of the component the, and I'm going to call it value, but you could also pass in options. Like let's say for example, you want to pass in modules or actually create a module with the component. You could do that by adding this flag and we'll be actually using some of these flags in the future. For now, let's go and just uh, create this component. So I'll copy this and let's go into the code editor. Now in a prior video, I showed you the different extensions I have. If you click on this and I, I have Angular files here and this is a tool to help you generate uh, different things easy. Like, let's say for example, you go into your spa and then right click on your app folder. And then here you have all these like generate components. So you could use this to generate different things within your application. Now I'm going to be using the command line because not everybody's going to be using this plugin or this extension and not everyone's going to be using Visual Studio Code. So I want to kind of keep it more universal. So let's do it from the command line. So I'm going to open up the command line and then within your spa folder, I'm going to go use that or paste that ng generate component and then whatever uh, the name of the component, I'm going to call it value and then hit enter. This should generate as a new component. Okay. So if we go to the app folder, it should be in there and here's the, our value folder. Now keep in mind, if it's not in here, uh, just go and hit refresh. That happens to me sometimes when I'm generating a bunch of stuff, it, it won't show up here for some reason. So I just hit refresh and it shows up. Now Angular uh, does something for us. Like if you notice right here, our app.module file was changed and Angular pulled our component into our module file for us. And let's go and check that out actually, if I minimize this. And it went and added our brand new component automatically for us. Now, if you're generating components within subfolders, sometimes Angular won't do, do this for you. It won't add it to the module for you. And you'll have to come in here and manually enter it in yourself. So just keep that in mind. If we go uh, into the component we just generated, now what I want to do is display our new uh, component to the view. And here is the element that we could call to, to, to um, pull in this component. So if I copy this, and for now, I'm just going to throw it out in our main app component. So just open this up and we can get rid of this UL for now. We'll be changing this a lot in the future. And then that element, just paste that in there at value, close it up. Now that should pull in that component right here. So save it. And then if we go and run the application again, Okay, so we booted up the application. If we go back to the front end again, refresh it, and we should have values right here, or values works, that's it. Now that is that component we just, we created. So we successfully created a component, we checked our module uh, document, and we made sure it's being pulled in correctly. And then we, uh, we went and we pulled it into our view to, to make sure that is working correctly. In the next video, we're going to be creating HTTP calls to our API on the back end from within our component. So I'll see you then.